You can listen to The Professional Left wherever you get your podcast, on Netroots Radio, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for December 25th, 2020. It's not safe for work. Recorded live from the world headquarters of the Cornfield Resistance, where we thought we spotted Santa this morning, but it turned out to be a jolly old New York Times reporter here to interview Trump voters in diners. It's the professional left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. I want to wish everybody a very Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Uh, we love you. We're so glad that you were, have been with us, and we want to thank you for the cards and letters and donations and gifts and uh, what whatever you have sent us. I am wearing right now mm-hmm. a T-shirt sent up to me, to me, not to you, Drifter. No, I got to me. I got a rock, <laughs> but yeah. Actually, you did get rocks. Your I brother did. sent you little cubes made out of rock that you freeze and put in your scotch, and it doesn't dilute your scotch. So, yes. you actually did get rock. <laughs> I, I was hoping it was like a, a, a the box. I thought this is it, it's the smallest dueling pistols I've ever seen. No, <laughs> no, it's still that was from your brother. From my brother. But this T-shirt says on it, and I'm wearing it right now. So I'm reading it upside down. Excuse me. Oh, the virus outside is frightful. But this yarn is so delightful. And since we've no place to go, another row, another row, another row. Yeah. And that has been <laughs> and the story it's got of a knitting our house. bag. Yep. The last several weeks, really. Um, yes, I'm knitting sweaters for all three kids. And I finished the one for youngest child. And these kids and, are not tiny anymore. They're, no, they're, full they're size not. They're up. full-sized adult sweaters. Mm-hmm. And I finished the one for youngest child first. Um, and she gave me the nicest compliment when she opened it. Um, she opened it and she looked at it and she said, you know, my sister is going to steal this. <laughs> excellent. And that was just excellent. Like, you know, she steals all my nice clothes. So, she, you know, middle child is going to steal this. And that was a very nice compliment. Uh, we also have been receiving cards and Christmas cards and cookies. Thank you for the cookies. Yeah. When we sent out postcards to our donors, uh, people that have supported us. Junior Dude put the mailing labels on the postcards. He did. And being Junior Dude, he made sure to track geographically yes. where each person is. So important. <laughs> Very important to know, you know, do you have PayPal and uh, Patreon donors in each state? And he found that there is um, a gap. There's a gap in... Um, it, we are underrepresented, let me put it that way, yeah. in the Dakotas. The Dakotas, yes. And Mississippi. Yes, which is kind of a shock. And, shock. Then, and then he said Hawaii, and I said, no, 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 Hawaii, we get uh, mailed in donations right. from Hawaii from time to time. And I know that in the Dakotas and also in Mississippi, there are people who will mail in sure. a card or a letter or a check from time to time. So yes. I think we really are supported in all 50 states. Yes. But uh, we got a Christmas card from Utah we this did. week, and that is unusual to get a to get a card or letter from Utah. Uh, so, and it's very short, but I wanted to read it. It is it is typical um, in some ways and atypical in others. Um, BG and DG, long overdue. Thank you, and we we thank you for the donation. Mm-hmm. Long overdue. Thank you. Just put the last of four children through college. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, we went, whoa, that's a very good reason to uh, postpone donating to a podcast if you're trying to put your fourth child through college. Happy solstice and blessed new year in gratitude from behind the Zion curtain. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that made me chuckle. We thank you so much for that Christmas card and, and lovely card. And thank everyone for listening and for being there for us this year. It's been a tough year. Tough Christmas in a lot of ways. As long as we're mentioning correspondence. Yeah. I also want to mention we do get cards and letters. So we're represented in pretty much all 50 states. Yeah, pretty much. Um, We have gotten and regularly get letters from England, from... Across the uh, ocean blue. That's right. uh, We get letters from a military base in Germany, which will will remain Mm -hmm. nameless. 
uh, our friends in Japan from the uh, yep. expat community in Japan. So we are um, widely known. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which is, and which is very weird. grateful for that. Yeah. 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 And I had kind of a surprise yesterday, uh, Christmas Eve. I joined in with six, 14, 15 other people. Uh, mostly from the Baltimore area, but there were people from various parts of the country. And we were on a Zoom call with um, Tony the Democrat. And Tony the Democrat is a man who organizes the Postcards to Voters program, Mm -hmm. where we receive addresses and write postcards to voters. And we're doing a lot of postcards right now to Georgia, of course, there are also some special elections going on in Virginia for their state house. Um, and so it's it's called like the the I forget board of board of something. Anyway, it's their state house. And uh, so we made we wrote postcards together on Zoom yesterday. Mm-hmm. And we're going around and uh, introducing ourselves. And I got to hear the names of other people and what kind of postcard they were doing. It was really fun. And they got to me and I said, I'm Fran and this is my first time in this group. I'm really glad to be here. I'm so honored to meet Tony and to participate in this. It means so much to me to do this. And one other person there said, Fran, would you like to tell us a little bit about your background? (laughs) Well, thanks. Thanks, Uncle Phil. (laughs) Yeah, I said, uh, do you know about my background? And she said, I not only know about your background, I'm a supporter of your background. I went, oh, my goodness. So that's a very strange feeling. During the Zoom call, I was able to look her up to make sure I had her correct address because she hasn't gotten her postcard yet. So I wanted to make double check and make sure of that. But uh, it was, uh, you know, it. I was not asking for that, but it still shocks me from time to time to realize that, you know, we're fam- we're almost famous in some places. So. Very, very nearly, um, very nearly celebrities <laughs> in some places, which is <laughs> in, in very in very special circles. People do know who we are. So very grateful for that. And you remember that earlier this year, Drift Glass, when we were on a uh, Zoom call with Hal Sparks. I do. We were at the, the sexy liberal thing. Right, the sexy liberal stuck thing. in a room with goddamn Hal Sparks. We couldn't get out. It was like a panic room or or a, one, one of those one of those escape rooms. We kept looking for the way out and looking out and couldn't find a he way. Had, he had great hair before the pandemic. He did. He did. <laughs> now, now it's like now oh, he really it's magnificent. To, he will be now. He needs to be one of the Hardy Boys because you know go <laughs> back in time he shall go. The third Hardy Boy, yes, yeah, he helped yeah. me with heavy metal music. But but the moment when someone says, I can't believe I'm in a room with Drift Glass and Blue Gal, I went, uh-oh. Yeah, so? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> so. That was fun. That was, it is, it is, it tickles me and, and I'm delighted. And again, I was just honored to be with 14 other activists on Zoom yeah. who were all doing, you know, magnificent work reaching out to voters. Yeah. Which is something we're going to talk about today in our political university yes, uh, segment. So uh, let's get to podcasting, Drift Class. It's Christmas Day, for gosh sakes. Well, I did want to mention with all the Christmas and holiday greetings and uh, the word passing along that this is the week that Donald Trump had a very special Christmas message for Mitch McConnell. From hell's heart, I stab at thee. For hate's sake, I spit my last breath at thee. Which is somewhere between the Grinch and Khan, I think. <laughs> um, well, and that's pretty much Donald Trump. Eh? That was this week. It was really like, I really was from hell's heart. I stab at the Mitch McConnell, just fragging uh, the uh, the COVID relief package, which we're going to talk about. And just, you know, trashing the place and trashing everybody who knows Mitch McConnell. I'm making a list of 2022 Republicans who betrayed me. Yeah. Yeah, and, which is just kind of a perfect way for the Christmas season to be ushered in. The psycho in the White House issuing political death threats to yeah. the leader leader in of his own party in the Senate who was doing his fucking bidding because right. the the shitty two six hundred dollar uh, check that was in the COVID relief bill was negotiated by Donald Trump's own guys. Yes, you know? the Treasury Secretary. Yeah. Yes, so yes. it's not like it came as a surprise. It's that he went out there and negotiated something and decided to just, well, you know what? Here's a thing I can trash on the way out. Um, no, and MAGA Twitter didn't like it. No. MAGA right. Twitter didn't like that it was only $600 as much as uh, non-MAGA Twitter didn't yeah. like that it was only $600. Yeah, people, so 
People mm-hmm. like getting money when they need it badly, and mm-hmm. they look to their government to help them in a national, international emergency. If the only person I know who went on the record saying it was too much was Larry Summers. So Larry Summers. Yeah, should, who's not hurting. <laughs> Yes. You're going to overheat the economy. You don't want to yeah. do that. Fuck you. Things. Yes. Yeah. Not going to overheat my economy. Good Lord. But yeah, um, this, is, um, this is the Christmas season. This is the holiday season. This is the this is the all 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 solstice related and adjacent holidays season. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. And so we want to wish everyone, um, with a few exceptions, uh, we want to wish 56% of you a happy holiday. <laughs> Something like that. Well, there um, is a really solid – people have noticed that really solid 39% of voters just that are fox zombies. You know, they just – there's nothing left. And that's our political university. For today. Part seven. Yeah. Um, you know, quit trying to – as you wrote, I thought quite well. Uh, quit building electoral strategies around the fantasy of the persuadable Republican voter. And I would also argue around the fantasy of the persuadable independent voter. Yeah. Um. Because the persuadable independent voter will be persuaded if you succeed to win elections. Right. They want to be on the winning side. They want to be the one that – they don't want to have to apologize for their vote later. Yeah. And uh, so they they will be persuaded by success. Mm-hmm. Um, but people in the year of our Lord 2020 who are still calling themselves the GOP or I'm a Republican. Yeah. Uh, they are not reachable. You, Ever. they are, Ever. uh, can, they are solid in their support of team evil. So, yeah. uh, if you've reached December, 2020 and you're still calling yourself a Republican, I don't have anything to say to you about politics. There's just, and, well, and, and Rachel, the doc bit Right. Had a long thread about this yesterday. And by the way, this yes, is Christmas did. day. We're broadcasting. We're literally recording this on Christmas morning. Here, it is Christmas day. Uh-huh. At one forty three in the afternoon uh, right I, now. I'm yes. wearing I'm wearing one of the two red shirts that I own. So and I'm wearing either, I'm wearing my Christmas t shirt. Yep. So, so either yep. I am um uh, in a festive holiday mood or I'm a crew member who won't make it through this broadcast. So <laughs> one of those two things is possibly true. Maybe both. I don't know. Um so and by the way, the the doesn't require ironing tag on the shirt is a fucking lie. Just you know, <laughs> got, you leave this thing in the back of your closet for nine months, it needs ironing. So it needs ironing. Just saying. Just saying. <laughs> um, but Dr. Rachel Bittacoffer, yes. um uh, did this long thread, and I'll just read a little bit from it because it's very, it's right on topic, and, it, and I couldn't agree with it more. Uh, it won't matter because elections like these are decided by turnout, the percentage of R ballots relative to the percentage of D ballots. Nothing disproves the death of persuasion elections more than the fact that the GOP is still competitive to win Georgia after their coup attempts and corrupt pardons. And she goes on. I'm not going to sort of I won't. Read no, and her and two of the most corrupt senatorial candidates in the history of politics. Yeah. And there's there's one party now that is absolutely on board with destroying American democracy to to hold on, seize and hold power. And the other one that isn't. And the the one that is a full blown out and proud fascist party that is issuing pardons for for you know for murdering war criminals is competitive with the with the Democratic Party, the one that likes democracy, the one that wants to sort of keep the country from becoming a fascist shithole. And these two forces in our country are now competitive with each other and have been for decades. And so the this was the this was like the MRI. This was the Okay, Donald Trump has become, in, especially during you know his losing season, having lost the same election now seventy nine different times, um, and not lost much much support at all among his his voters, um, is the test. You know, will you follow this guy into the bunker, and will you follow him into the suicide pit, and will you you know will you end it all to to hold power? And the answer is yeah, they'll do it, and they, they were always going to do it. The, the Republican Party has always been pro treason. All they required was a little push, and Trump was the little push, and now they are fully on board with treason. I'm sure there will be a crop of independents come February and March that mm-hmm. David David Brooks will write about, how, suddenly discovering this whole new crop of independents who who are like populist, blah blah blah, and they'll have a whole bunch of characteristics that that are strikingly similar to Republicans. Um, but the fact of the matter is that these people cannot be reached. And are going to spend the next forty years trying to destroy the Biden administration, mm-hmm. and pretending otherwise doesn't get you anywhere. 
in the New York Review of Books from December 3rd, uh, Fintan O'Toole has an article oh, called yes. Democracy's Afterlife. Mm -hmm. And it, I'm just going to read a few sentences of it. Um, there can never be a result of the 2020 election. Mm -hmm. One thing we can be sure of is that for Trump and his followers, there are not five stages of grief leading them from denial to acceptance. The furthest their sense of it can go is to the second stage, anger. The staying power of Trump's destructiveness lies in the way that disputed defeat suits him almost as much as victory. It vindicates the self-pity that he has encouraged among his supporters, the belief that everything is rigged against them, and that the world is a plot to steal from them their natural due as Americans. Trump, win or lose, doesn't merely have a post-November 3rd afterlife. As a political force, he has never been anything but an afterlife. One of the reasons there cannot be a post-mortem on Trumpism, quote-unquote, is that Trumpism is post-mortem. Its core appeal is necromantic. It promised to make a buried world rise again. Mm -hmm. Coal mines would reopen in West Virginia. Lost car plants would return to Detroit. Good, secure, unionized muscle jobs would come back. The unquestionable privilege of being white and male and native would be restored. Yep. Trump did not manage to do any of this, of course, but in a sense, that very failure keeps the promise pure, unadulterated by the complexities of reality. I just love that whole article. Recommend it. Um, and I, the complexities the way, of reality are what Mitch McConnell has to deal with in getting this bill passed. If, if you if you were if you were try to generate a more mm -hmm. Irish name than Fintan O'Toole. Fintan O'Toole. Oh no, you can't do it. <laughs> um, no. Yeah. This is, this is dealing with reality is where the whole thing falls apart. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And that's why uh, just sort of parallel uh, go side by side with that. That's why the genre of magic ruralism will never die. Right. Because the, our coastal elite media is fascinated um, in, in a, in a, anthropological kind of way because it doesn't affect them at all mm -hmm. um and, and so they give their readers popular stories of of it's like once the old west was long gone but westerns and frontier day stories were still popular about mm -hmm. a fictional universe that didn't exist and couldn't exist and was never coming back but wouldn't it be cool if it did that's what they're that's what the customers of these stories will never tire of and so they keep dispatching people out to you know winona county minnesota Mm -hmm. And what they find mm -hmm. are people who believe that Donald Trump, through sheer force of will, could reopen coal mines, could fill mm -hmm. mines back up with coal, who could bring back those muscle jobs, who could bring back the 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 un uh, unalloyed privilege of being white in America. That that my job with a high school diploma will be enough for me to buy a house and a car and two kids and out and, and a great life, and that all of that is impossible. And they don't want to hear that. They want to hear that some nefarious, liberal, Soros, internationalist banker force is standing between them and this great life they could have. And their birthright. And right. Their birthright. They were born for this. This is what they yeah. mean by white supremacy. They mm -hmm. are a superior group of people who deserve all of this. And it's being withheld from them by nefarious forces of globalism and, mm -hmm. and black people and mouthy women and gay people. And speech codes on campuses and whatever else you want to throw in the hat because it all works. And they elected a strong man who was going to reach in and yank these people out of the way and restore them to their rightful place at the top of the pyramid. And because because he failed, that just makes the conspiracy all the more convincing. Right. We got to switch gears, though, Drift sure. Last, sure, sure. just a little bit because uh, there there was a break in the matrix this week. It, well, yeah. <laughs> And and as a black cat appeared twice, and it's like, oh, what's that? <laughs> oh, that's when they're resetting the matrix. Um, thus proving my theory, yeah, that our Republican friends are in fact reprogrammable meat bags. Yes, um, yes. And tell, tell us what happened. The, the well, this glitch in the matrix. What what happens is sometimes the reprogramming happens in real time on camera, and you can actually mm -hmm. watch it happen, and you can just see the gears kind of grinding and shredding, like, uh oh. Uh oh, new software being uploaded. Everybody mm -hmm. calm down. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. there was a whole cottage industry in talking about how um, 
uh, Dominion Software uh, was was owned by um, a cabal of dead South American dictators. Again, dictators and, 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 and George Soros. Yes, well, right, and, right. And, and it was all programmed to flip votes and millions of votes were, were and it's all a lie. It's all a gigantic, yeah. paranoid, um, delusional, racist lie. Which Conspiracy uh, theory, right, yeah, conspiracy, right. Which, which millions of Republicans believe. And it was going along fine until they started talking about this shit, specifically naming people and companies and on television. <laughs> And, that, and, and naming actual companies that actually uh, have revenue and shareholders. Yeah, yes. Right. And, and you know what else? And they legal, departments. And legal departments. <laughs> That's right. And then the lawyers got involved. Yeah. And once the lawyers got involved, those reckless claims of voting machine rigging were suddenly going to have real world consequences for the people who were doing the lying. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. fake Dr. Seb Gorka, which was hilarious, on whatever shitty show he is, some, you know, it's and Newsmax. Newsmax. He's got his own show on Newsmax. America um, First with Seb Gorka. Yeah. He had to cut in on the My Pillow guy, mm-hmm. Mike Lindell, who was busy talking about these conspiracies that he masturbates to every night, um, and and had to push him aside. Said, "Well, let's not talk about the specifics of what's going on here. Let's not get into the details because they will sue my ass off, and I'll have to go back to Hungary and go back to you know the Dracula Castle where I came from." Uh huh. And. That was, and you can just watch it happen. Watch Seb Gorka suddenly have to shift gears and uh, hard into reverse, and tell Mike Lindell, in so many words, shut, the shut up. up. Yeah. Um, yeah. And Judge Janine Pirro, I believe, was off the air. I mean, she took herself a, a personal day, I believe, while they ran this canned, you know, um, retraction, not retraction, but clarification. Further investigation yeah. into the Dominion voting machines finds nothing wrong with them. Yes, yes. And, and at the center of this, not quite the center of this, but one of the key players is somebody I've never heard of before and I shouldn't have because why would I know this guy? Right. Eric Coomer, who's a top <laughs> Dominion voting system employee who has been forced into hiding after becoming the target of various deranged conspiracy theories about stealing the election and, and giving it to Biden and so forth. Um, and a bunch of campaign surrogates including pro-Trump outlets, are being sued for defamation. Mm-hmm. Among those being sued include Rudy Giuliani, Sidney Powell, Newsmax, One American News Network reporter Chanel Rion, and blogger Michelle Malkin, which the Michelle Malkin part is just fucking perfect. Mm-hmm. Um, and the stupidest man on the internet, the Gateway Pundit, also Rudy's drunk witness, Melissa Carone, her, mm-hmm. affidavit, will, her affidavit, as you write, will protect her now. Yeah. Uh, and the Gateway Pundit could lose his house over this. Which if is, they decide to go for financial damages to their company, he could. Yeah. I mean, this is this is fascinating to me because um, if if you don't know about this, the the libel laws have been since uh, the People versus Larry Flint or yeah. Falwell versus Flint. Uh, Jerry Falwell sued Hustler magazine and and Larry Flint because. Uh, Hustler published a story, a fake ad of Jerry Falwell that included details about Jerry Falwell having sex with his mother in an outhouse. Mm -hmm. And it was a parody ad, uh, clearly not uh, indicating that it was true. It was uh, putting Jerry Falwell down, Jerry Falwell Sr. down, uh, but not uh, as a news story. And the courts... uh, sided with Larry Flint and said it's parody it he's a public figure he is Jerry Fall was a public figure as a public figure you can make fun of him mm-hmm. and he can't sue you for making fun of him because he's a public figure mm-hmm. now layer on top of that established case law mm-hmm. the further case law that corporations are people yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. and Privately held corporations are not public figures, apparently, Mm -hmm. in that they can sue for defamation if you lie about their company. I find this fascinating how a corporation can sue, whereas Hillary Clinton can't sue for Clinton cash. You know, the book about all of the um, terrible, terrible financial dealings, so-called of the of the Clinton family, the Clinton cabal. And, you know, when the author was asked, well, where's your proof? Well, I really don't have any proof, but, oh, you know. She's a public figure. I can make shit up. I can make shit up. Yeah. And this has been the whole of Fox News is I can make we can make shit up about the Clintons. We can make shit up about uh, Eric Swalwell. We can make shit up about 
uh, Barack Obama not being born here. We can do whatever we want. We can we can pretend to send investigators to Hawaii to find the real birth certificate or lack thereof. You know, and this is Donald Trump's shtick too. I can lie about my political opponents because they're public figures and I won't get sued for it. Well, it turns out that a corporation can sue you and a corporation isn't going to be bought off. Um, and I don't, I don't blame the family of Seth Rich for uh, ending the nightmare that is oh. trying to sue Fox News mm-hmm. um, and taking the money. But, uh, you know, <laughs> Dominion Voting Systems isn't waiting for that money. Oh. <laughs> and, and, and it's not an emotional nightmare for them to let this drag on until they get a settlement. Uh, and, and one of the settlements is immediately everyone is backtracking to try to protect their asses over what they said five minutes ago. Yeah. And, and that's why it gets, there are moments, and I, I know I've said this on this podcast before over the years, there are mm-hmm. moments in the Mobius strip of mm-hmm. Republican programming where you can mm-hmm. see the twist. You can see the reverse of, you can see the, the lie that was told yesterday is falling apart. We need a new lie today. So what's it going to be? Well, it's going to be Hunter Biden's laptop or it'll be something else. Right. The moment. Right. And, and the question is, is Hunter Biden a public figure? Yeah. Well, no, there's, I, my point right. being, you're, you're right. But my point yeah. being, there's a moment when re- when reality collides with a with a with a big lie, with the one that mm-hmm. everyone's telling, and suddenly you have to you have to change course very quickly. And there's a period in there when the reprogrammable idiots don't know what to think because they're they're out there talking about you know like Mike Lindell, he's 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 just a fucking jumped up you know wing nut asshole who's got a shot of TV because he's got a company and he talks about Donald Trump being sent by God and he doesn't know any better. He's not a he's a fucking moron. And so he's will, perfectly willing to say, "Ah, oh, it was these voting machines, and everyone knows it to be true." And then Sepp Gorka, who mm-hmm. knows better, has to bring him in, mm-hmm. and and mm-hmm. you can just see it happening in the brains of all the tiny, tiny brains of all the all the Republicans out there in the world. Going, wait a minute, what? But I was told I should yell, "Dominion voting system stole the election." How? No, no, no. Well, that's and this is where that's this different. is where Rudy Giuliani, Drift Class. This is where Rudy Giuliani and Sidney Powell are in big trouble, really yeah, yeah, big trouble, huge trouble, because they're both lawyers. They're, well, they're both lawyers and people like Gateway Pundit and even Fox News can say, I was quoting the president's attorneys. Yeah, I was right, quoting right. Sidney Powell. I he I was interviewing Sidney Powell on background. That I am reporting what was I was told by people who represent the president of the United States. And that puts then all of the aegis of the lawsuit onto these two attorneys mm-hmm. who knew full well what they were saying was bullshit because they didn't say it in court. Yep. And by so, the way, yeah. adopting the Southern Poverty Law Center strategy of suing hate groups, because that's what these yep. people are. They're a hate yep. group. Yep. And they're right. a, an incorporated news network hate group. And mm-hmm. the, the mm-hmm. Daily Stormer was sued almost out of existence. There was the, the right. first in or the organization in Oregon. The Klan was nearly bankrupted. Yep. Lost lost all of their buildings yeah. to victims of uh murder. The Klan. And, yeah. And, and yeah. so the the And that is something that every lawyer knows. Yeah. And now that we have people saying, look, you forced me to go into hiding, to Mm -hmm. abandon my home and go into hiding because you are out there telling things that you know are lies that are putting lives at risk. And we can prove that you know it's a lie because you didn't testify to the same thing in court. You just said it on Fox. And yeah. Suddenly, yeah. suddenly we have to adjust the lie. So the and and adjusting the lie at the corporate level is no problem. It's just that you, you issue a memo saying, okay. Well, yeah, the- except and, except it's all on camera when you're dealing with Fox and OAN right. and Newsmax. Their lies are all on camera, and you can do discovery as to how they got those lies and whether they decided to run them. Yeah. And in which did they, did corporate know? which you can you can look at emails, you can look at notes of meetings, you can look at texts, you can look at and if so anywhere anywhere in the electronic communications of those companies, OAN, Newsmax, Fox, it says we're going to run this because Sidney Powell needs our help right. or right. if anything like that where the motive is not we're going to report this as truth, we're going to report it as a political assist to the president of the United States. They're sunk. Yeah. Yep. Um, and I, I just want to thank Media Matters and Bobby Lewis at Media Matters. If you yeah. go to yeah. Media Matters, they Bobby Lewis has compiled a list of thirty six clips of people lying about people lying on those outlets about those voting machines and those voting machine companies. And, and so the, the gap, that's, that's a start. 
<laughs> the gap between everyone at Fox News headquarters getting the memo yeah, and yeah. Crazy Uncle Liberty getting the memo at, you know, at the at the Christmas table yeah. is about a month. It can be a matter yeah. of weeks or months. And so, yeah. it, again, they are completely reprogrammable, which, again, is why appealing to them with through facts and reason is useless. They are fucking zombies. They will believe anything Fox shits into their skull. And the, the part that is terrifying and hilarious is when the part between craps, <laughs> they, they literally have no idea what to think because lie number one is, is now, is now discredited yep. as we take, and there's no lie number two. And they don't know what other than to say, I'm saved. I, I, I'm, well, blessed by I, God. I'm not perfect. I'm just forgiven. Yeah. Merry <laughs> Christmas, you stupid liberals. There you go. I, I triggered you. They, they go back to their default settings like a machine does. Like a, like a, like any computer does. They go back to their factory default settings of figuring out what they're pretty sure liberals don't like and just repeating it real loud until Fox News shows up with today's lie, which which will keep happening until there is no more Fox News. All um, right. Go talk to me about Pardon Palooza. Let's do a moment on that. Yeah. Well, this, this is the week when Donald Trump pardoned everybody under the sun, uh, all the people who pled guilty during the Mueller investigation. Um the uh, the military contractors who murdered people in Iraq um, under um, Betty DeVos's brother's guidance, Eric Prince's guidance, um, and uh, uh, Roger Stone, um, Paul Manafort, etc. And um, I am I'm loath, as you know, Blue Gal. I don't mm-hmm. like to blow my own horn. It's just not natural <laughs> for me to take credit for things I said and did. Oh, shit. Um, but let's look back to. Uh, to the year of our Lord, 2016, uh, literally the day after election day, literally the day after the election, the two, uh, November 9th, 2016, your pal drift glass, uh, put hashtag inners back when there was an inners show on, on the MSNBC program. Uh, and this is all date stamped. So good for me. What happens when Trump pardons all of his goons and henchmen? What happens when Trump pardons himself? Because you, because you knew, you yeah. elected a mobster. You elected a lying, racist, criminal scumbag. What did you think was going to happen? And you knew th- you knew too that the Constitution gives him unlimited pardon power, it's, and that's how he'll get out of it. That's the golden yes. ticket. That's the thing that yep. gets you out of anything. Oh, and it's the thing you can sell. You, you can yes. give away. You can trade. You can say, "Look, you you, you come you come for me. Uh, you, you protect my ass. I, I'll pardon your ass." How's that? So he had a whole bunch of criminals out there who were just doing whatever he wanted them to do because on the promise of whatever happens, don't worry, I'll get you out of it. I got this magic stamp in my hand here and I can get you out of anything. So don't worry about lying or cheating or telling Congress to fuck off. All that is federal and all that can be pardoned away by yours truly. And that's why Donald Trump, part of the reason he is freaking out that he's about to be dragged out of the White House. Mm-hmm, that, mm-hmm. Is a, that is a magic instrument. That is, as, I, as I've said before on this podcast, that's like clout. It's a mm-hmm. magic form of currency that only has power as long as you're in power. It doesn't, it doesn't go with you. Ex-presidents can't pardon people. The mm-hmm. minute Joe Biden puts his hand on the Bible and is sworn into office, Donald Trump can't do shit for anybody. Mm-hmm. And then he is naked and, and on the run. And that's why he's trying to pile up as many protective, bribed favors among as many people as possible who will now owe him. But I, I kind of wonder if they do. I kind of wonder if, look, you pardon me and now fuck you. What are you going to do? Take it back? <laughs> you know, from uh, issue me a Mar-a-Lago uh, unpardon? So you got to be careful when you bribe people with something you can't take back. <laughs> um, because once Roger Stone is free and, and Paul Manafort are free to – to do whatever they want, say whatever they want, and give up their Fifth Amendment rights, by the way, and testify. Um, why would they protect you? Because of loyalty? Because you're, you're going to do for them? You're going to be up to your up to your third chin in lawsuits mm-hmm. for the rest of your fucking life. They're going to strip you for, of every asset you have. They're going to go after your books. They're going to open up Deutsche Bank. They're going to find all your dirty little secrets. And your name is going to be shit for the next thousand years. Who will stand with you then? Your well, it depends on if he's going to pardon Ghislaine Maxwell well, for a billion dollars. That's now if it's cash, that's enough. Yeah. If it's cash and, and leave the country, yeah. you know, I don't know. Why would I can't you? predict. Uh, he, he is not good at strategy, no. but he is good at blowing things up. Yeah. And so he might just, you know, pardon, 
pardon the uh, sex trafficker of children. And uh, boy, won't that be fun for the QAnon people? Hey, um, that Hunter Biden's laptop will suddenly be is way more important be, than be that. Eight hundred right? feet tall and be full of yeah. you know all the evidence um, of the Trilateral Commission yeah. and, and George Soros and Karl Marx never died. He was his brain was transplanted into Joe Biden's head, and it's yeah. yeah, proven yeah, all yeah, here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this week, Ben Sass and Chris Christie tried to polish up their reputations enough to run in 2024. Yeah. And you got to give credit to Nicole Wallace for remembering the past right. about Chris Christie. Um, and then uh, you had a kind of special retweet in your a, world. It was this miracle. I look up <laughs> and people are saying, did you see what Leslie Jones did? And Leslie Jones found through some sort goddess, of... Leslie goddess, Leslie Jones. Goddess Leslie Jones. Uh, who my wife would like to be when she grows up. I know that's I would. true. Uh, Leslie Jones, who's amazing and who's funny and who's yeah. a terrific person and all around cool hang. Uh, and doing a ton of good work in Georgia, by the yeah. way. Oh, no, she's yeah. – and, and funny, funny as hell. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just wish they'd find uh, the right roles for her. Yeah, well, we'll see how this coming to America works out yeah. for her. I think well, it's going to be great. So, yeah. I am so looking forward to that. That just made me smile. The ads for, for coming to America too, coming back to America, whatever it is, uh, just made me smile. But she and, and I do think it's good casting to put Leslie Jones in oh, that yeah. role. Yeah. Well, she apparently found my uh, famous Chris Christie graphic. Of A giant his, Chris Christie blocking the bridge, the George Washington, George Washington bridge. bridge. And retweeted it. And and suddenly, uh, at least nine other people now know who I am. So that was very exciting for <laughs> nine, me. Nine nine thousand people know who you are. Well, and I really, I, it yeah. was the winner when when we spoke of this uh, Christmas miracle, which is what it is, uh, in front of middle child, and she was like, "No, no." <laughs> she, just, yeah, yeah, she just, was impressed. You're just stepdad. You, you're just oh god, yeah. What? what? Oh, well, and then she here. brings her phone over to me yeah. and she said, is this, did Drift Glass do this picture? Mm-hmm. I said, yes, your stepfather did that picture. Yes. It's in Leslie Jones' Twitter stream. I said, yeah, it is. I told that's you. Fair. And she said, oh, wow. Oh. And that's when my heart grew eight sizes bigger because. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. The 18-year-old was impressed. Yeah. I got to yeah. be a cool stepdad for about nine minutes. and then Nine minutes, yep. That guy. You want to tell everyone to go over to Crooks and Liars this weekend and next weekend. We're doing our annual Crookie Awards, and Crookie Awards are given to the best and worst of 2020. It's a way of us us to uh, review the year, good and bad. And we do review good things. As you know, we're not just going after all the bad things that happen, but we're certainly, uh, you know, best distraction of the year we gave to Baby Yoda. So yeah. Uh, you know, that kind of thing. We're having and, fun with it. And the Crooks the crooks and Lives people are an excellent website. They've been an excellent website <laughs> for a very, 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 very long time. They are yeah. one of these stalwarts, one of the pillars of the liberal media. Um, the yeah, and it was media. funny, the staff there kind of comparing what was the big news story when, when they started at Crooks and Liars. Oh, and a couple of people said, you know, the day I started at Crooks and Liars, Trump did this. Uh-huh. And I went. The day I started at Crooks and Liars, Carl Rove resigned from the Bush administration. Right, right. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. See, that's, that was 2007. You know, so. and, 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 here's the, and here's how we keep our superpower of memory charged up all the time. You and I, I mean, you do this for Crooks and Liars. I mean, this is right. your job. Um, mm-hmm. and a, a wonderful job you do. But both of us spend pretty much every day a big chunk mm-hmm. of every day reading and writing about politics and history and contextualizing things and and putting it into words and saying remember this remember when that happened remember when Peggy Noonan thought the uh, the Tea Party was the salvation of the Republican Party <laughs> look at that and, and pull an article out like really yeah oh no she said and literally the title of the article was like Tea Party to the rescue and here's the problem there was this crazy stupid leader we had for the Republican Party and a few of the elites. But the rest of the party's in great shape. All it needs is an infusion of populist energy. And the Tea Party, like, wait a minute. I have just seen the future. I have just seen the future. I've seen 2021, 2022. You know, it was only just a few people near the top who were the real problem. The rest of the party's probably okay. What it needs is an infusion of, you know, blah, 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 Josh. Populism and and hope. Yes, right, right. And and being able to remember these things and contextualize them and pull them together in a coherent narrative. Well, we and can... thank God for the internet <laughs> helping us remember our archives. I mean, I think we probably every three days 
one of us will say to the other one, thank God for searchable archives. And and Crooks and Liars has searchable video archives, which I, I think know. is, you know, God's gift. Thank God for John Amato finding out how to do video. But before YouTube, he figured out how to embed you video on a website and store it at a server. And that's just wonderful. Uh, let's do a news roundup, Drift Glass. All right. That sounds fine to me. Uh Sadly, U.S. deaths are expected to top 3 million for the first time. This makes this the deadliest year in U.S. history. Uh, the U.S. is on track to see at least 400,000 more deaths in 2020 than in 2019, all of which are mainly due to the coronavirus pandemic. Uh, we don't have anything in our notes uh, about the explosion in Nashville. Uh, that story is unfolding. Uh, we've been following it on Twitter. I'm very grateful to hear that apparently... Uh, no one was killed in this blast. And all I can say is certainly we're thinking about everyone in Nashville and uh, concerned for you and uh, hope that they find whoever this did this. Well, apparently and, the uh, van had a PA system that was I heard announced. That. I heard you know, that. Leave the area right now. So this right. was, a, this was right. intentional. This for was not first degree murder. Supposedly that's yeah. going to get them off of that charge because they warn people. But uh, yeah. Wow. Wow. Uh the, the headline from Axios summed up the week. Trump turns on everyone. Yeah. I really wonder, though, what do you think of this turning on Mike Pence? Mike Pence doesn't need a fucking pardon from you. No, no. But Mike you need Pence, a pardon from Pence. So what? what is the deal there? Mike Pence has to sit in at the at, – he has to preside over the Senate like mm -hmm. Al Gore did and yeah. announce that the other guy won. Right. Right. And that is going to be the largest betrayal of any human being ever in the mm -hmm. history of mm -hmm. forever. Mm -hmm. Not and he's, I heard I heard rumors that he's going to leave the country after that. L literally, like I, I he's rumors, going on a trip overseas. I heard rumors that he might go on a trip overseas before that. Like, ah, <laughs> uh, no, I got I got I got the Rona now, and I got to be at home <laughs> for a while. Then I got to go and watch the kids. You know how that that can be. Yeah. Um. Yeah. But Mike Pence and and well deserved because Mike Pence is the worst sleaziest homophobic enabler of fascism. Um, he, he, he really needs to be lashed to the same stone. That's going to drag Trump's name down to the pit of history yeah. Yeah. where he will live for the rest of his life. His political career is over and it should have been over five years ago. Um, you he think he'll go back to hate radio. Oh yeah. He's got a voice for it. And you know, yeah. there was a market for Mike Pence to, to, because starting January 21st, 2021, mm -hmm. um, will come the re great rehabilitation tour. You'll see a right. whole bunch of people who suddenly become independents and they, they they never like the tweeting. And you're already seeing that with, as we mentioned already, Ben Sass and Chris Christie, who are polishing mm -hmm. their reputations. Mitt Romney will be elevated to demigodhood because he stood up to him. And there'll be a whole, there'll be two factions inside the Republican Party, but there's only enough pie for one. There's mm -hmm. only enough voters mm -hmm. and money and organization for one party to exist. So there's going to be a great push for our friends at the Bulwark podcast and the Lincoln Project and all the Never Trumpers to become, as we've said before, an absolution machine. Mm -hmm. We will be yep. absolving people yep. on like like Mooney weddings. We'll do them two hundred thousand yeah. yeah. at a time, and suddenly the the people yeah, who everybody were, will have a book out about what true conservatism really is and right. how bamboozled those poor voters were who had no agent. All the people that were interviewed in diners over the years. Over the last four years, will have been fooled and bamboozled, and and because you know both sides are pretty bad, and both sides abandon us, and both sides both blah, sides blah, are blah, bad, blah. and they just love America. That's the point. They That's just love the, America so much. Yeah, yeah. Um, speaking of people who shouldn't ever be allowed in a newspaper, uh, this week the Wall Street Journal handed Scott Atlas. Remember him, Scott Atlas? Oh my God! Gave him an op-ed column. D didn't give him the back of their hand. Didn't tell him to get the fuck out of the room. Uh, they gave him an op-ed column so he could rain more lethal bullshit down on the American public because it's the Wall Street Journal. Uh, the title of his article is A Pandemic of Misinformation, which, if this were about the Trump administration, would be true. But it's not. It's the opposite <laughs> of that. The media's <laughs> politicization of COVID has proved deadly and puts America's freedoms at risk. And that's the last anyone's going to hear of Scott Atlas. Trump fragged the COVID relief bill, which was also keeping the government running bill, as well as the defense authorization bill. He literally defunded the military. You know why? Taking Confederate names off of things. Confederate things out of military bases, right. Trump demanded that Congress increase the ridiculously low $600 stimulus checks to 2000 
Trump largely left negotiations over the measure to lawmakers and his Treasury Secretary, Stephen Mnuchin, who was responsible for the $600 stimulus check idea. He called it a disgrace and ridiculously low, both of which were negotiated over the over the unified opposition of Democrats by his fucking people, by mm-hmm. Mnuchin and by McConnell. Those are the people who well, he sat on up. his ass and tweeted. Yep. Now, yep. if he refuses to sign the bill, unemployment insurance for I, I don't know how many millions of people will run out tomorrow. Like within the next 48 hours, unemployment goes away. The government would shut down on December 29th. Uh, the emergency economic aid would be frozen and benefits from the previous COVID relief bill would expire at the end of this month, including the moratorium on evictions. If he pocket vetoes this, which is something that Rachel Maddow talked about, which means just sitting on it, just doing what he does best, nothing, just doing nothing. Um, this congressional term would expire and the whole thing would have to be taken up again from zero when the next Congress is sworn in, leaving America just you know pants down screwed for the rest of the world to laugh at. And millions of this country are, will suffer horribly, um, mm-hmm. not just from Corona, but from the, the complete breakdown of distribution, from starvation, from no money in the bank to pay for anything, all of which is brought to you by the Republican Party. Trump White House sent staffers a memo that they will start departing the week of January 4th and were later instructed to please disregard the email. Where's the undo button? Um, yeah. Speaking of departing, Rosemary Vrablik, who is Donald Trump's longtime personal banker at Deutsche Bank, who has handled more than $300 million in loans to his company since 2011, abruptly resigned. He'll be leaving the bank next week. Yeah. I bet she's going overseas and not coming back yeah. wherever oh, she is from whatever she saved, country she's living in. I hope she yeah. clipped coupons and saved, put a little aside for some travel. Uh huh. While Trump continues to downplay and ignore the massive Russian cyber attack on this country, both now former, by the way, he left this week, Attorney yeah. General William Barr, right before the pardons dropped, and Secretary of State Mike Pompeo agreed that Russia was definitely to blame for the hack that compromised at least half a dozen federal agencies. On Saturday, Pompeo said, we can say pretty clearly that it was the Russians behind the attack on the federal government. Hours later, however, Trump tweeted, of course he did, that it may be China, it may, not Russia, saying everything is well under control, while insisting that the lamestream news media has exaggerated the hack and insisting that the real issue was whether the election results had been compromised. Maybe that's the real story, Blue Gal. Yeah. And then he got to work. Yeah, then he got to work signing a thing. He signed a thing, an executive order requiring that beautiful architecture will be the preferred style for federal buildings. Because that's not fascist. No, no. I (laughs) I think for him and and Albert Speer down in the basement of the White House going, Germania could have been so great. But, you Mm -hmm. know, a whole bunch of garish buildings with a big gold T in front of them is, is his vision for the American capital. Acting Defense Secretary Chris Miller, acting. Um, ordered a Pentagon-wide halt to briefing the Biden transition team, calling it a holiday pause, because apparently that's a thing. While Miller said the halt in cooperation was mutually agreed upon, a Biden spokesman said there was no mutually agreed upon holiday break and that the move reflected isolated resistance by political appointees. Yeah, yeah. Um, in local news, I want to bring something to everyone's attention just to, to show you how deep into the uh, groundwater, the rot has gone, which I know is mixing metaphors. Um, when GO re- GOP recklessness comes home to the heartland, uh, the both sides do it narrative is the default setting. Out here in Trump country, the social prohibition against naming and shaming Republicans is nearly indestructible. You can't do it. It is not, mm-hmm. it's not polite, it's not nice, and you're not allowed to call Republicans out for who and what they are. Now, uh, it manifested itself in this way this week. We have one local quote unquote liberal radio show. That's mm-hmm. it. And it's the same yep. program, the same station that, that syndicates like Rush Limbaugh or Sean Hannity. So it's just in there in the corner pocket. And the host of that show was gone this week. And on, the, on holiday vacation. On holiday literally. Vacation. Yeah. Christmas Our, vacation. Um, and everyone in town knows everybody. So we know who this mm-hmm. guy is mm-hmm. many times. He's interviewed me a couple of times. Um, Anyway, it was his show was taken over by you know the, the morning guys mm-hmm. and the when zoo it, crew or whatever the crew. they call themselves, right? Right. 
of the local Springfield Zoo crew. And when it came down that the the uh, COVID bill was in trouble and it was you know it was being blocked and things were happening and Congress were, it was it was clear. I mean, the, the story, as you all listening to this know, was a three trillion dollar bill that was trimmed down to a two trillion dollar bill that was trimmed down to a nine hundred billion dollar bill by a series of Democrats giving shit up to accommodate Republican demands, which were outrageous. To accommodate and- one Republican, one Mitch Republican. McConnell, yeah. period. Yes. And, and finally getting something and then, you know, Trump blowing it up. And that's the story. That's yes. the story. That's the actual factual true story. But you're not allowed to say that because then the people who are your neighbors who have Trump signs in their lawn might come over and like piss on your lawn and call you shithead. At or the worse. Store. Or worse. Yeah. So instead it's like, Oh, I just, I wish we should, we should put up a statue, whatever the anti-statue of liberty is, a plague on both your houses. Oh my God, the Congress, yeah. you know, both sides oh, are doing Washington is job. so messed up. Washington is just so messed Democrats, up. Democrats, yep. Republicans, it's just, they're both terrible and they're both awful. And Throw them all out. It's, it's terrible. It's, yeah. It's the one time, and I, w- I was sorely tempted to call in and say, what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah. And, but I know the answer. The answer is, I don't want the Republicans who buy ads on this show. And I don't want the Republicans who support the radio station at which I work and the Republicans I know at church and the Republicans I, uh, my kids go to school with and the Republicans I shop with turning on me because then I would be unemployed. Well, and I don't want them turning on my morning drive show I, and saying that's that liberal who betrayed Trump because their show is apolitical. It's all about the wacky in the shit. Yeah, um, it's, it's news and weather, right? Yeah. But but the afternoon show that where they're a sub – was the liberal, you the know, one, gulag. <laughs> yeah, the one liberal show. The one liberal show that, okay, I guess we have to have one liberal on because it's sandwiched between Hannity and Mark Levin, right? That's right. And and that's it. And so, okay, to be fair, we have to have one liberal show. I hate him, but we have to have him on. And if it's him, everybody knows, like you say, everybody knows who he is. whole bunch of people in town went to high school with him. He sure. is a local guy. Yeah, and he does so like he does trivia. He does yeah, local theater. Yeah. Everyone knows he's who an he is. Right, yeah. he's, he's a theater guy. Yeah, yeah. everybody exactly. in town knows who he is, and his politics isn't a threat because he is so local. He didn't come from outside and become a liberal podcaster. Like he's factored into. I know. <laughs> yeah, like some people, he's factored into the local equation. Right. And and both sides, he's he's allowed to exist for that reason. So, but the morning drive guys wanted none of it. They were not going to go there, and uh, it was it was telling. It really it was, was. Really, it was just it was it was as if if I manifested the worst example of cowardice of just like mm-hmm. we just don't want any trouble. Okay, so we know we right. have to. It's it, Christmas we have to, week. Nobody's yeah. listening anyway. We're just going to blame Washington. And we yeah. don't want anybody yelling at us. And if we if right. we blame right. both sides, then we can just say, look, we blame the other guys too. Why just leave us alone? This is good news. Um, a higher court in Illinois threw out a lower court ruling um, by a whack job right wing judge, which was brought mm-hmm. by a whack job right wing uh, state senator, I believe saying that, that the governor of the state couldn't declare an emergency longer than 30 days. Right. He, he and, and to be fair, in March, Governor Pritzker did announce a 30-day right. emergency thing. And the, <laughs> like you said, the state, the state house guy, Republican from downstate, sued him, saying it can't last longer than 30 days. Right. Right. And, and, and they found a right-wing judge in the state to agree with them. You know, that's and right. it had to go up this up the scale, up the scale, up scale, and now and, and this guy, the actual state senator, judge, has thrown it out. Right, state senator has been like the loudmouth at all the anti mask shit, anti mask, anti clothing. Let me go get my hair done. Right. Yes, he's, why can't I? Their, yeah, he's their local hero, and a judge said no. It doesn't say thirty days and then nothing. It says you can have as many emergencies as you need to have. You just have to declare them in thirty day increments. So no, no. like you, and like you said, the Chicago fire has to be all fixed yeah. in thirty days. <laughs> yeah, Twenty nine days. That's it. Everything's good, right? We're all good. There's no more damage. Everything's fine. It, it which is ludicrous. Which is, is disasters, yeah. weather disasters, fires that don't work that way. Neither do pandemics. And the the idea that some fucking judge in the state found it in his heart to to call out the governor as a you know jackbooted tyrant. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Yeah. He made it longer yeah. than thirty days. And like again, the higher court and all the lawyers involved were like, this is just stupid. This is a stupid yeah. loss and I'm gonna kick it out of court. So that is good news. But you know, he fundraised off of it, Driftglass. Sure so 
That's, that's, the, that's the point. That's the point. Yeah. Each week we post to our Facebook page and website an internet kitty sent in by you listeners. This week's internet kitty is a dog. The dog is Elvis. Aww. Elvis belongs to the great nieces of Andy in England. Hi, Andy. Oh, hey, Andy. And I got to say, Andy sent me several pictures to choose from. And um, this dog belongs to those girls. And those girls belong to that dog. I got to say. <laughs> uh, Elvis, to celebrate the holidays, um, Elvis should have left the building. But instead, he stayed and ate one rainbow fairy cake one gingerbread man, he licked out the trifle bowl and chewed up a wooden spoon while also licking out his old dog food tin, presumably from the trash can, all in the space of a few hours. (laughs) Merry Christmas, everybody. Uh, Andy says his breed is golden omnivore, I'm sure. And of course, uh, Elvis will also eat freshly poured pet food, our fake sponsor, or he'll also eat an old can from the garbage or a ginger brand man. Just ask him. <laughs> Whether you serve pet store perfection or dollar store dreck, your pet will sit on the kitchen floor and demand that the food they eat is only freshly poured. But your dog will go to the garbage can also. <laughs> yeah. well, you can sing the song. You can sing the song. Yeah, but we'll sing the song. We'll, we'll go to the garbage can if necessary. We'll go to the garbage can. No problem. Freshly poured. Freshly poured. Oh, my Lord, it's freshly poured. And you can visit Elvis and his trifle-eating grin at our (laughs) Facebook page or website. You can send your internet kitty or other pet to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, where you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go Postal Unions! Let her on the air unless you say otherwise. Hashtag save the post office. I've had to tell uh, family members in our house that uh, some presents are are delayed in delivery. Um, I had to tell my dad, who's very upset that the girls didn't get their gift cards in time for Christmas. Um, I told him, look, Dad, there's 12 days of Christmas. He's got plenty of time to get it here. (laughs) And uh, we are certainly thinking of uh, the postal service and delivery carriers all over the country who are at, you know, between 40 and 60 percent capacity right now due to COVID and also mismanagement from above to joy. Yes. So we are thinking of you. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. This is not charity. This is our job. And it is a labor of love. And we wish you a very happy holiday season. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution, and you can too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details. Our PayPal and postal address information, Patreon, go buy me a coffee, all that good stuff is there at proleftpod.com. Please share our show on social media, and thank you for doing that. Hey, Drift Glass, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Oh, Blue Gal, the Internet Kitties want to remind everyone that winter time is an especially good time to adopt a cat or dog that's in need of a forever home. Let's think about living. Let's think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, loving, dubbing. Let's forget about the whining and the crying and the shooting and the dying and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. The Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2019-2020, DGBG Productions.